Welcome friends! Today's video is all about acne, also known as acne vulgaris or commonly known as pimples. What's interesting is acne is not just a skin problem. So today we're going to look at acne from a unique holistic viewpoint. We're going to go over what are the root causes of acne and how can you treat acne from the inside out, meaning through diet and key supplements. We're going to go over why acne is actually an outward manifestation of inflammation inside your body. And we're going to talk about how acne is caused by a disrupted skin microbiome and how that reflects your internal gut microbiome. For those of you new to my channel, I'm Dr. Rajshree Nambudripad. I'm board certified in internal medicine and acne is one of the most common symptoms I see in my practice. So let's dive into it. So acne is a very common problem. It affects up to 50 million Americans and up to 90% of teenagers. And the lifetime incidence of acne is like 100%. That means we're all gonna wake up at some point in our lives with a pimple on our face. And when it happens and we see that pimple on our face, we're terrified because our face and how we look can really affect our self-esteem. The traditional approach to acne is to use a lot of topical products. So it's a lot of lotions and potions like benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, topical antibiotics, and retin-A creams. So although these products can be helpful for some people, for other people they cause a lot of dryness and irritation. So a lot of people end up frustrated with their acne. So today I'm going to talk about why the key to healing your acne is to look at what's happening inside your body. So what you're eating is actually far more important than all the topical products you're putting on your face. So acne is an inflammatory skin condition and it involves disruption of the skin microbiome. So our skin has its own microbiome, so it has numerous bacteria and even fungi or yeast, and they're all living together symbiotically. Every person is unique and has a unique skin microbiome, but if something triggers an imbalance in the bacteria on our skin, that can cause inflammation and acne. So acne is simply dysbiosis, which is a bacterial imbalance of our skin microbiome. So there's two different types of acne. There's a bacterial acne and there's fungal acne. Bacterial acne is what we're most familiar with. So it can cause whiteheads, which are pimples, or in more severe cases, it can cause cystic acne, which is deeper, more painful, and can cause scarring. Acne is caused by an overgrowth of several bacteria on the skin. But one of the main bacterial species responsible for acne is called Propionibacterium acnes. And actually, they just changed the name to Cutibacterium acnes. What a strange name, right? Because there's nothing cute about this bacteria. Interestingly, cutie bacterium acnes is actually present on the skin of people with acne and those without acne. The difference lies in the dynamics of the skin microbiome. So in those suffering from acne, something has disrupted the microbiome and it's causing certain species of the cutie bacterium acnes to overgrow. So it really is fascinating that cutie bacterium acnes can either be a normal commensal bacteria or it can be a pathogen and it all depends on the dynamics of the skin microbiome. Did you know that our skin is actually our biggest organ? And our skin microbiome plays a very important role in protecting us from pathogens that are everywhere. For example, bacteria and viruses that are everywhere in the environment. And our skin microbiome is impacted by everything we're exposed to, like soaps, lotions, cosmetics, our climate, UV exposure, even exposure to our loved ones and pets and our skin microbiome changes as we age. Acne is caused by inflammation of the pilosebaceous unit. So this includes the hair follicle as well as the oil glands, which are called sebaceous glands. So if inflammation triggers the sebaceous glands to increase production of the oil, this can plug up the hair follicle, causing the bacteria to overgrow, causing acne. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that the oil being produced by their face is bad, so they do everything they can to remove the oil, including oil-free products and washing their face with salicylic acid several times a day. But guess what happens when you strip your face of all the oil? That actually signals your hair follicles that there's disruption and distress of the skin microbiome, so they respond by increasing production of oil. So you can see how the traditional treatments for acne can often create a vicious cycle. So now let's talk about what are the root causes of acne. Once again, acne is caused by inflammation and disruption of the skin microbiome. And believe it or not, it may all be caused by inflammation in the gut microbiome. So there's something called the gut-skin axis, and this is a whole new paradigm shift. 
but research is showing that the trillions of bacteria in our gut microbiome actually influence the type of bacteria that grow on our skin. So believe it or not, our gut microbiome is heavily involved and can be a root cause of acne. A lot of people who suffer from acne have inflammation and dysbiosis, meaning a bacterial imbalance in their gut. So what's causing all this inflammation in the gut? Well, it all stems from the diet. Unfortunately, the standard American diet, or the SAD diet, is a huge culprit for acne. And that's because the standard American diet is loaded in refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup. It has a lot of fast food, which expose you to hydrogenated oils, trans fats, and inflammatory vegetable oils. All the dairy products expose you to hormones. And non-organic, conventionally raised poultry and meats also expose you to hormones. Next, we have processed foods. Now let's face it, we live in a society where packaged foods are often more attractive because of convenience. But these packaged foods are processed and they're loaded in chemicals that can be harmful to the gut microbiome. Finally, pesticides, which are found in non-organic or genetically modified foods, can also disrupt the gut microbiome. The standard American diet is also missing a lot of important things that can protect you from acne. And we're going to go over this later in the video. When you eat these kind of inflammatory foods, it can cause an overgrowth of certain bacteria, and we call this dysbiosis, and that can trigger inflammation in the lining of your gut. Now, the lining of your gut is only one cell layer thick, and it was designed this way so that you can easily absorb nutrients from your food. But the problem is if this delicate lining gets inflamed, you can easily get holes in the lining of your gut. We call this leaky gut or abnormal intestinal permeability. So in leaky gut, Food particles and bacteria from your intestines can easily enter your bloodstream, and then it can actually influence the type of bacteria that grow on your skin and cause inflammation on your skin. Now I have a whole video dedicated to leaky gut, so if you want to learn more about this condition, I'm going to link that video below. Once again, this is the revolutionary concept of the gut-skin axis, and that's why it's so important that we pay attention to your gut when we're treating your acne. Another big root cause of acne is hormones. And what's fascinating is food can affect your hormones, which can cause acne. If you're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates that are processed and high glycemic index, like breads, pastas, cereals, and pastries, this can actually cause hormonal acne. And let me explain how this happens. These refined carbs cause a spike in your blood sugar, and that triggers the release of two important hormones, insulin and IGF-1. And when these two hormones go up, that can trigger inflammation in your skin that can cause acne. High insulin can also trigger a domino effect that can affect other hormones. For example, in women, high insulin tells the ovaries to produce more testosterone, and testosterone can cause acne. We especially see this in women suffering from PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. So that's why when we help these women clean up their diet and we get their insulin to come down, we also see their testosterone come down and we see their acne improve. Next, a lot of women experience acne that flares up right before their periods. That's because right before the period, we see big fluctuations in hormones. So this is when estrogen levels go down. Interestingly, testosterone levels actually stay consistent throughout a woman's menstrual cycle. And right before the period is also when insulin levels start going up. And that's why a lot of women crave carbs and sugar right before their periods. So this drop in the estrogen as well as the rise in the insulin is what triggers the acne that happens right before a woman's menstrual period. What's interesting is if your diet is causing unstable blood sugar, these hormonal shifts are going to be even more exaggerated, causing a greater flare-up in the acne. Once again, I want to emphasize that food affects your hormones, which affects your skin and can cause acne. Teenagers also have higher levels of a hormone called DHEA, which is an androgen made by the adrenal glands, and that can also trigger acne. Teenagers also have higher levels of testosterone. So no wonder 90% of teenagers suffer from acne at some point. Another root cause of acne is yeast overgrowth in the gut microbiome, and that can cause fungal acne. Sometimes this can be triggered by antibiotics, because although antibiotics are helpful to kill some bad bacteria, they sometimes disrupt the balance of the bacteria in your microbiome, and this can allow fungi or yeast to overgrow, like candida. And this can reflect on the face with fungal acne. So in fungal acne, we see tiny uniform bumps that are very itchy, and it's caused by an overgrowth of malassezia yeast on your skin. 
Fungal acne can also be triggered by steroids, both topical steroids as well as oral steroids. So I once had a patient who had to go to the hospital for an allergic reaction and was given steroids, and that triggered fungal acne on her skin. The good news is fungal acne is treatable, and we're gonna go over that later in this video. Now let's talk about how I evaluate a patient with acne. So because acne is not just a skin problem, I like to do blood work to see what's going on inside the body. Here are the tests I typically run on my patients. So I check the HSCRP, which is the high sensitivity CRP, which is a marker of inflammation in the body. Then I like to check the fasting glucose, the hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of the blood sugar for a three month period, as well as the fasting insulin. Now, if you have a high fasting insulin, that indicates insulin resistance, and that can cause inflammation as well as acne. Then I like to check some of the key vitamins. So this includes vitamin D and zinc, which are both very important for your immune system and your skin. And I like to check homocysteine. Homocysteine is a way for me to measure your B vitamins, and it's an inverse marker of the B vitamins, so lower the better. It's also a marker of your methylation and detox pathways in your cells. Then I like to check all the hormones. So this includes a full thyroid panel, so that's TSH, free T4, and free T3. I check the DHEA, which is that androgen made by your adrenal glands. In women, I check estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone. And in men, I check testosterone as well as estradiol. It can also be helpful to do a gut microbiome test. So this is a test from your stool, and it tells me everything that's going on in your gut. So it tells me your bacterial profile, if there's any dysbiosis or bacterial imbalance, or if there's a fungal overgrowth with yeast like candida. It also tells me if there's inflammation or leaky gut. So this can be really helpful because remember, inflammation in the gut can cause inflammation in the skin and affect the skin microbiome causing acne. Now let's talk about treatment. How do we treat acne? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I like to treat acne with a holistic approach, meaning from the inside out. So we start with the diet. Diet is so important when it comes to your skin. So the first step is to increase your intake of vegetables and fruit, because that's where you're gonna get all your antioxidants and phytonutrients, and vegetables are great for feeding all the good bacteria in your gut microbiome. So try to eat a diverse range of vegetables and fruit. So I often tell my patients to aim for five colors a day so that you're getting lots of antioxidants. One of my favorite ways to get antioxidants is to have a berry smoothie. In fact, I had a berry smoothie this morning before filming this video, and it's one of my favorite things to have for breakfast. Next, you want to increase your intake of omega-3 fatty acids, which are essential fatty acids, so they're really nourishing for your skin. And you can get this by eating more wild fish, like wild salmon or sardines, and if you're vegetarian, you can get it from nuts and seeds, like walnuts or chia seeds. Quick story. When I first tried sardines, I didn't think I was going to like them. But now I actually love them. So one of my favorite lunches is a sardine salad. And this is what I often have for lunch. So it's an arugula salad with beets, olives, and grapes. And I include a few cassava chips that are made with avocado oil that give it a nice crunch alongside the sardines. Next, you want to increase your intake of good monounsaturated fats like extra virgin olive oil and avocados, which are so good for your skin. As much as possible, you want to make sure that your poultry and meats are organic or grass-fed to avoid all the hormones. Now, there's certain things you do want to cut out of your diet. So this includes refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup, and then you want to avoid all the inflammatory oils. So you want to avoid canola oil, corn, and soybean oil. And you want to avoid deep fried food in restaurants because that's going to have trans fat and hydrogenated oils. Next, you want to avoid dairy products because dairy has hormones that can cause acne. Dairy also increases your production of insulin and IGF-1, both of which can cause inflammation in the skin and cause acne. A lot of people are also sensitive to the proteins in dairy, which are casein and whey, and that can cause inflammation as well. Next, you want to avoid alcohol for multiple reasons. First of all, alcohol slows the detox pathways in your liver, it turns into sugar, and it's dehydrating, which is not good for your skin. Be sure to also cut out soda, fast food, and processed foods. Now let's talk about gluten. So gluten is a very common food sensitivity. 
In fact, 8% of the U.S. population is gluten sensitive. So these people observe that when they avoid gluten, they feel better and they have less inflammation. So if you're gluten sensitive, by cutting out gluten, you might see your skin improve. So the best way to figure this out is to do a two week elimination where you avoid all gluten in your diet and see if your skin clears up. I want to emphasize that it's really important to stabilize your blood sugar because if your blood sugar is fluctuating, this can cause high insulin and insulin triggers inflammation and it can increase your testosterone and so that can cause acne. So you want to make sure that your meals are really balanced. So you want to have protein, fat and fiber at every meal to stabilize your blood sugar. Now let's talk about hydration. You need to hydrate your cells to flush out inflammation from your skin. So drinking water is super important. So you can calculate how much water you need by taking your body weight in pounds and dividing that by two. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be drinking 100 ounces of water every day. Be careful with caffeinated beverages as well as alcohol because they can dehydrate your skin. Now let's talk about healing your gut microbiome. So the first question is, are you having a good bowel movement every day? Because your bowels are one of your biggest detox pathways. So if you're constipated, you may actually be recycling toxins from your gut. So if you are struggling with constipation, I have a whole video dedicated to this topic and I'm going to link that below where you can learn natural ways to better manage your constipation. Next, we want to replenish good bacteria back into your microbiome. So we can do this with high quality, broad spectrum probiotics. In my practice, we see excellent results with probiotic 100 billion and probiotic 225 billion. So these both have multiple strains of bifidobacterium and lactobacillus, and research shows these are the strains that improve the health of the gut microbiome. What's great is these probiotics are really effective, but they're also convenient because they don't require refrigeration. So the best way to take them is to take it in the morning on an empty stomach with a glass of water. Next, I recommend digestive enzymes. So one of the ways your gut can get inflamed is if you're not breaking down the food properly. And a lot of people with acne actually suffer from bloating. And it's thought that many people with acne have something called achlorhydria, meaning they don't make enough stomach acid. Without enough stomach acid, this can cause bad bacteria or yeast to overpopulate, causing dysbiosis or SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So in my practice, we see excellent results with Digestive Enzyme Pro. So this is a broad spectrum enzyme that targets the breakdown of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, because the better you break down your food, the less inflammation you're gonna have in your gut. So you wanna take one to two capsules either before the meal up to 30 minutes in advance, or you can also take it after the meal. Next, we use L-glutamine, which is an amino acid that can help heal inflammation and leaky gut. So glutamine is food for the enterocytes, which are the tiny cells lining your small intestine. So it helps feed the cells and heal the inflammation. So you wanna take it one to two scoops in a glass of water first thing in the morning along with your probiotic. Now let's talk about how we treat dysbiosis. So dysbiosis is an overgrowth of either a bacteria or a yeast like candida. Well, the good news is these are pretty treatable with herbal antimicrobials. And the great news is the herbs are pretty gentle and they're anti-inflammatory. For a yeast or fungal overgrowth like candida, we see great results with candida support. So this is a gentle combination of herbs. So it has berberine, oregano, powdy arco, ginger, and caprylic acid, and they help to reduce the growth of the yeast. So it's best taken twice a day after food for about six to eight weeks. Now to clean up a bacterial overgrowth causing dysbiosis, I love oregano oil and berberine pro. And these work really well together. So you take it twice a day after food for about six to eight weeks. And the great news is they're typically very well tolerated, they're gentle, and they're also very anti-inflammatory. So the good news is these herbs can be super helpful at cleaning up dysbiosis or an overgrowth of yeast like candida in your gut microbiome. So by taking these herbs and cleaning up your gut microbiome, we often see your skin microbiome improve because remember the gut influences your skin. So that's why we often see acne clear up as well. Now let's talk about supplements. What are the key supplements that are good for your skin? The first supplement I recommend is omega-3 fish oil. 
So fish oil is so good because it has essential fatty acids that are nourishing for your skin and it helps to reduce inflammation. Because remember, acne is caused by inflammation on your skin. So it improves your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. So omega-3 helps to lower inflammation versus omega-6 increases inflammation in the body. And the American diet is very high in omega-6. So we want to do everything we can to improve the omega-3s. So our omega-3 fish oil is actually made from anchovies, which are a small fish, so they don't have any mercury. And this is also third-party tested to ensure there's no mercury. And you want to take one to two capsules a day. And the great news is it has no fishy burp. It's really well tolerated. Next, I recommend vitamin C, which is the super antioxidant for your skin. So our vitamin C actually also has antioxidants from quercetin, the acerola fruit, as well as citrus bioflavonoids. So I recommend taking one to two capsules a day, which is about 500 to 1000 milligrams a day. Next, I love astaxanthin. So astaxanthin is what we call the king of carotenoids, meaning it's from the vitamin A family. So it's extracted from the red algae in Hawaii. So it's a very powerful antioxidant for the skin. And sometimes we even call it the internal sunscreen because it protects you from UV light. So I recommend taking one to two capsules a day, which is six to 12 milligrams per day. Next, I recommend vitamin D3 with K2. So vitamin D3 is super important for your skin and your immune system. So you wanna get your level optimized to 60 to 80 on your blood work. So to get to this level, most people need to take about 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 per day. Next, I recommend zinc. So studies have shown that people suffering from acne often have lower zinc levels. And when they supplement with zinc, their acne actually improves. So our zinc actually has 50 milligrams per capsule. So you only have to take it every other day and you wanna take it after food. Your goal is to get your blood level of zinc up to about 100. Next, a great way to nourish your skin is to take collagen with hyaluronic acid. And this is great to put in your smoothies. And so collagen is really high quality protein and the hyaluronic acid helps to repair the skin. Next, I wanna talk about stress management. Because if you're chronically stressed, this raises your blood levels of cortisol. And cortisol is really inflammatory on the skin and can cause your acne to flare up. Speaking of stress, I actually dealt with acne myself when I was an internal medicine resident at Northwestern about 15 years ago. So obviously I was under a lot of stress being a resident and also my sleep was all over the place because I would be on call at night. And then on top of that, I had a sweet tooth. One of my favorite treats was tiramisu, which I would enjoy probably once a week. And as you know, tiramisu has a lot of sugar, it has dairy. So combined with all the stress, it was just flaring up my acne. And at that point, I didn't know what to do. So I went to see a dermatologist a couple times and they prescribed a bunch of topical products, which I used, but it caused a lot of dryness and irritation in my skin. So I experienced firsthand the, the frustration that a lot of people get from the topical approach to acne. So I kind of wish I knew back then what I know now about acne coming from the inside out. Now let's touch on sleep. So beauty sleep is a real thing. So sleep actually promotes all the detox pathways in your body and it helps to lower cortisol, that bad stress hormone. So it's really important that you prioritize sleep for your skin as well as your overall health. Now let's talk about exercise. Did you know that cardiovascular exercise actually promotes the growth of good bacteria, both in your gut microbiome as well as your skin microbiome? So that's why it's important to exercise on a regular basis. So what if your skin is flaring up horribly? What can you do? Well, that's when I recommend an acne detox. So this is basically a modified fast that you do over a weekend. So you're basically just eating vegetables and drinking broth. And this can really help reduce inflammation in your body and your skin. You'll feel lighter, less bloated, and typically you will see your skin start clearing up. For those of you looking to lose weight, you may wanna consider going on a paleo diet or a clean keto diet. And I have a whole video dedicated to the clean keto diet, which I'm gonna link below. But these diets are great for stabilizing your blood sugar and getting your insulin levels to come down. So this can help regulate your hormones, reduce inflammation, and then help to clear up your skin as well. Now I want to offer you a couple more tips for your skin. First, resist the urge to pick at your acne because that's only going to trigger more inflammation and you're also going to introduce bacteria from your hands onto your face microbiome. So you don't want to do that. 
Next, it's best not to overwash your face. So use gentle products to wash your face maybe just once or twice a day. This is because over cleansing changes the pH of your skin, it strips your skin of the protective antimicrobial peptides, and it removes that protective sebum layer, which is that fatty acid layer. So it kind of traumatizes that skin microbiome and it tells the hair follicles to make more oil to protect itself. So it creates that vicious cycle that can actually trigger more acne. It's good to be really gentle with your skincare regimen. So it's a little bit of trial and error to find the products that work best for you. For example, the cream that I apply on my face is actually made from olive oil and honey, and I'll link that below. You also want to make sure that your skincare products are free of parabens and fragrances because those can actually disrupt your hormones. Next, it's good to protect your skin from the sun. So you want to wear a wide brimmed hat. And when it comes to sunscreen, avoid all chemical sunscreens because they have hormone disrupting properties. So it's best to use sunscreens where the active ingredient is zinc oxide. Because remember, zinc is actually good for your skin. Next, some people suffer from the aftermath of acne, which we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So basically that means that after the acne breakout has finished, they're left with dark spots that can last for months. So one way to address this is to increase the intake of vitamin C, both through the diet, eating more vitamin C rich foods, as well as taking a vitamin C supplement. You can also use topical vitamin C products, which can be really helpful as well. I want to share a case example. So one of my patients was a lady in her 40s who I had known for years and she had perfectly good skin. She never had problems with acne. Then one day she came to see me and she had all these tiny bumps on her forehead that were super itchy. So when I take, took a look at it, I could tell right away it was fungal acne. So I asked her, was anything different? Had she used something new? Because something obviously had triggered this. So then she mentioned to me she had gone to a dermatologist and for some dark spots she had, and they prescribed her a cream that had hydroquinone and hydrocortisone. So hydrocortisone is a steroid. So what had happened is the steroid caused an overgrowth of fungus on her face and it caused fungal acne. So this is a great example of steroids disrupting the skin microbiome and causing an overgrowth of fungus. So the great news is I was able to help clear this up pretty quickly. So I had her stop using that cream and I gave her the candida support, which was that antimicrobial blend. And I had her take it twice a day and within a week it completely cleared up. So that's the good news. Another interesting case that I'd love to share was a young man in his 20s who was suffering from pretty significant cystic acne. And his acne was so severe that his dermatologist was actually thinking of prescribing Accutane. So for those of you who are not familiar with Accutane, it's a very potent vitamin A derivative that can clear up acne, but it has a lot of side effects, both on the skin as well as the internal organs. So most people try to avoid Accutane if at all possible. So when I asked him about his diet, he mentioned that he loved milkshakes and pizza and he had them almost every day. So obviously dairy and sugar can be big acne triggers. So I imagined he had a lot of inflammation in his gut and that was triggering the acne. The good news was he was on board with changing his diet. So I cleaned up his diet, we got rid of sugar, dairy and processed foods, and I gave him some of the key supplements that I talked about today, like fish oil, vitamin D and vitamin C. I also gave him probiotics and glutamine for his gut. And when I saw him three months later, I was absolutely amazed because his skin had significantly cleared up and he was so happy and his self-esteem was better and he was relieved to not have to go on Accutane. So this is a great example showing the power of food on the gut microbiome, causing inflammation and triggering acne on the skin. In summary, acne is not just a skin problem. It's caused by inflammation, which is often present on the inside of the body. It's caused by a disrupted skin microbiome, which often reflects the gut microbiome. So be sure to remember that gut skin axis. Diet plays a huge role in acne. So by cleaning up your diet, stabilizing your blood sugar, and taking a few key supplements, we can see a significant improvement in your skin. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Please also post your questions and comments below and I'll get back to you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.